Coinbase actually has three products and it gets a little confusing. So in today's video, I'm going to explain the difference between the main Coinbase exchange and Coinbase wallet. As always, nothing in this video is financial advice and if you haven't already signed up for Coinbase, then there is an affiliate link in the description below. So as an overview, there is the Coinbase exchange and its associated app, which is also called Coinbase. This is a centralized exchange that makes it easy to buy and sell crypto and they will host your crypto for you and they offer a custodial wallet where they manage your private keys. Then there is also the Coinbase wallet, which is an app and is a self custodial DeFi wallet where Coinbase has no control over. And once you create the wallet, you are the full owner and you control the keys which are stored directly on your mobile device and not with the centralized exchange on coinbase.com. So to break this down, the Coinbase exchange works in a similar way to a traditional bank. So with a traditional bank, if you're transferring money to a friend, it goes from your bank account through one or more bank accounts to your friend's account. Basically, your money goes through one or more centralized entities and is subject to approval by the banks. In the case of the Coinbase exchange, it works in the same way and is often why you hear people on YouTube saying, not your keys, not your crypto. Because if for any reason Coinbase decided to or was forced to seize your funds or even reject your transactions, then there is nothing you can do about it. Whereas if you are using Coinbase wallet, then that is not the case. And with Coinbase wallet, if you are transferring money to a friend, it goes straight from you to your friend and is not subject to approval or processing by the third party entity, or in this case, Coinbase. So for example, you could see this as being equivalent to you giving cash to your friend in person. There are numerous reasons that people may want to use Coinbase wallet. For example, if you're worried about Coinbase going bankrupt or Coinbase being hacked, or for example, the government blocking crypto, or you may not want your transactions going through a middleman. So what are the pros and cons of having your money on the Coinbase exchange versus Coinbase wallet? On the regular Coinbase exchange, you can quickly sell your crypto for cash. Whereas on the Coinbase wallet, you can't do this. And to sell your coins for cash, you would need to transfer your coins back to the Coinbase exchange. Or alternatively, you can trade them on the Coinbase wallet for other coins. So it's worth noting that Coinbase the exchange does have insurance that protects a portion of their assets against theft and a cybersecurity breach. But it's worth noting that it's a bit ambiguous and it doesn't actually say how much of your assets are protected. You are not covered by their insurance if someone unauthorized accesses your account. So say you got caught by a phishing scam or someone got your password, then you are not covered by their insurance. On the flip side of this, your Coinbase wallet holds your private key and say it was hacked, then it is completely your responsibility as Coinbase does not hold any of the funds and so therefore cannot freeze it or compensate you. So if you get Coinbase wallet, then make sure to not ever give your seed phrase to anyone and be wary of scam emails. And also make sure you have your seed phrase written down somewhere secure and offline in case you lose your phone or it's stolen because this is what will help you recover your funds. It's also worth bearing in mind that if you get locked out or forget your seed phrases, then Coinbase cannot help you get back in or get your crypto back. You are fully in control of this wallet. So like a real wallet, if you lose that, then you'll lose all the cash inside of it. Going back to the Coinbase exchange, they hold your private keys. So if you forget your password, then they can help you get back to your crypto. Also, Coinbase.com has a large team of customer support to help you do this. For example, I was having issues accessing my account and I got a reply in around 12 hours. In this case, Coinbase acts like a bank. So if you lose your bank card, then they can get you access to your account again. As mentioned before, if the government was to ever ban crypto, then the Coinbase exchange would have to comply with the law and stop any kind of trading. But if your funds are on a self-custodial wallet, 
then the government cannot prevent you from carrying out transactions as they would need to shut down every computer running that coin's software and block the associated blockchain for that coin or token. And just to be clear, I'm not encouraging that anyone breaks the law if their government does decide to ban crypto. So in the end, which Coinbase app you want to use is going to be down to you and will likely be based on how often you are buying and selling and how secure you want your crypto to be versus how much freedom you want. Let us know below how you store your crypto and whether you have a preference. If you got any value from this video, then please don't forget to like and subscribe. And now that you know the difference between the two Coinbase products, then you may want to know how to buy crypto with each of these different products. So I recommend you watch these videos next. It's been Ollie from Get Geek Finance. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.